Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video. In this video we are going to be taking a first look at Mercer who is an upcoming promo S class character. We're going to take a look at the 6 star first just to see if he is worthwhile. And his name is Mercer, we know who he is. But the title is The Rotten Core, I'm not sure what this is about. Maybe this is something to do with the comic, someone can let me know. Now I have to go to Mercer's get up straight away, of course it's another Santa character. We have got Princess, who's sort of like the Christmas themed, but this is an actual Santa Mercer. He's got the backpack on. You know, he basically is like Santa Zeke. He's like Santa Negan, you know, the, the historical thing here in RTS. They have gone with the Santa characters. I do like that quite a lot. But this time around, they pick Mercer, and he does look pretty bloodied. I think if you compare him to the other characters that came out, he has gone through the wars. This guy is uh, looking kind of wrecked. So I do like the, the artwork for sure if in terms of the Christmas theme. So we'll look at his stats first. He's got 1,795 attack, 2,629 defense, and 2,508 HP. His trait is tough and his role is considered damage. Going across to the rush, it's called Paralyzing Reprisal. It is a 66 AP rush, so pretty quick. Deal 600% damage to up to three enemies. Those enemies get stunned for two turns. While battling on the defense team, this character gains 50% bonus HP. Now looking at the first half of this rush, the deal 600% damage to up to three enemies. Those enemies get stunned for two turns. That's directly comparable to someone like Mirabelle. And Mirabelle obviously did 250% damage and stun for one turn up to three enemies. Now, this is a big boost over Mirabelle. Now, Mirabelle does have a better attack stat than Mercer, and she was considered support. It is kind of strange that he's considered damage, but he doesn't actually have much damage. Like, I, I, I really do hate that, basically. I don't mind it so much if they've done, you know, the defensive damage dealer where they don't actually have any percentage damage. It's bleed or it's main damage or something like that, but this isn't the case. So this guy's just got a huge rush, which I guess kind of offsets the fact that he doesn't have good attack stat. You know, I'm not really sure if I like that kind of mentality though, personally. It's better to just have a damage dealer be a damage dealer. Now the rest of his kit may play into some of it. We'll, we'll go through it in a bit. Now I'm not sure about this second part. You know, I, I don't really like this while battling on the defense team thing. Now it is a nice bonus. This character just gets 50% bonus HP. It's not really that influential. We did have a previous character come out. I believe it was Adam who came out where he does a revive, I believe, on the defense team. That's a bit stronger, obviously. But being a six star, that isn't really viable. So you're not gonna really get that boost. On an attack team, this guy wouldn't be too bad though. Two turn stun is actually pretty good for up to three enemies. That means they're only gonna get a one turn between you know, him getting his rush up again. It's a 66 AP rush again, so you, you could get him up really early if you use him on the correct team. If you've got 8% weapons, if you've got AP gain on actives, he could actually get this rush off turn two without too much of a problem. Going on to the active skill, it is elusive and recover. So generally speaking, the, the active skill names give it away, but the recover means uh, there's gonna be a lot going on here. Initial cooldown two, cooldown of three number of use is five so this is standard this character gets elusive for two turns which is okay but obviously he has to be attacked so it's not too fantastic all teammates recover from bleed burn and maim and that is pretty big on a defense team the only issue you've got is a turn two he's generally going to be killed controlled you know he can be easily dazed that sort of thing before this is going to go off that is always going to be a problem but on an attack team that could be pretty nice you do run into a couple of bleed defense teams you've got you know raulito that sort of thing on another attack team this guy doesn't have to be your leader he can just be a support character even though he is considered a damage dealer he's got very good defensive stats so you can just sit there and you can just counter Raulito teams with this guy as a six star. Now we'll go across to the leader skill and this is going to be really the talking point of this character I believe. All tough and strong teammates get a very large bonus to AP when taking damage. So the sort of leader skill that Eric has in terms of tough strong but AP when taking damage isn't that great. But the second part of it is at the beginning of each wave up to two enemies get stunned for one turn. So we're starting to get like full control coming into leader skills. I do not really like that personally. I think that's just going down a bad road. And you know, if you get someone who has, let's say taunt, confused this sort of thing it's, it's it's a really bad path to go for now partial control that would bring down certain things like defense attack 
that sort of thing. That would be okay. I wouldn't mind that too much because it doesn't relinquish actually being able to play the game. I think if, if you can't actually do something with your character first turn, that's a bad thing. But if, if what you're doing is weakened, I don't think that's terrible. It's, it's not great. I, I think there's this is a double-edged sword on this leader skill. Obviously, there's no stat bonuses for people who are going to have that leader skill. But I do not like the path that that potentially could go down. You know, what's next? Two turns done. You know, it's, it's just like, you've got to think where this could lead to. And I don't really like that personally. No doubt this is going to be buffed up as the S-Class. As the six-star, I don't think it's that great because it's only two enemies. But as the S-Class, it is going to get monstrous. Now, Mercer's weapon is kind of interesting, mainly because it is giving him a 30% attack boost, you know, playing into that damage dealer role. But he's getting a 30% attack boost on his lowest stat, so it's not really going to give him that much of a stat boost. It's less than 600 boost that he's going to get. Obviously, this is going to multiply with other things, but if he's the leader, he's, that, that's literally a flat boost. It's just a 30% boost on that attack stat. The combat mods are going to be added on top, so he'll have less than 3,000 attacks, so it isn't great. The weapon isn't great. Obviously, if you're going to increase the other stats, there's going to be 800 boosts on top, so those extra 200 stats do make quite a big difference. I think that you'd probably either want his attack stat to be higher in the first place or that 30% to be something defensive or HP based but that's just my thinking the middle slot is the upgrade slot generally speaking AP on attack but you can obviously go with something slightly different you could go with AP on defense and try and double down and be one of those guys I hate those guys now the last slot is an off trait special and it's an, a boosted special as well it's a stun when being attacked a great chance to stun the attacker for their next two turns. Now, this isn't a tier 4 special. No, it's not with the focus or anything like that. But it has got a great chance to stun the attacker, which is considered to be around about, I believe, 50%. I think they should just start putting percentages on here. We should probably change all of the old things to percentages. It would be much easier for people to understand what's going on. But great chance is kind of considered around about 50%. And the better chance is the one that you can get from the armory is considered around about 30 to 35 percent resists are gonna have to come into play a lot more this character is very stun based by the looks of things however going over the entire six star i don't think he's gonna be that great he doesn't really offer the kind of character that you would need you know if you did want to damage dealer as a six star they generally speaking you cannot have percentage damage because you're gonna have to lean too much into the attack stat it's gonna make them quite weak his defensive and hp stats are awesome but it's basically a roadblock he's gonna get that active off and that's about it his leader skill isn't really gonna add too much at the moment as a six star and that extra part of his rush with the 50 percent bonus hp has to be on defense it's like even if he was on defense it's not really that big a deal because you know he's gonna get melted his, his core stats are over a thousand to a thousand five hundred less than damage dealers at s class status so he's gonna not that be that great as a six star basically now taking a look at him as an s class character his stats do get manipulated quite a bit where his attack gets boosted up much more compared to his defense and his hp to the sort of levels where he's actually not too much of a you know terrible damage it's not great still but 3908 attack 4100 defense and 4274 hp so very balanced stats as an S class, this is obviously 30 veteran rings. The trait obviously remains tough. He's still considered a damage dealer as well. Now his rush is still 66 AP. Now it deals 800% damage instead of 600% damage to up to three enemies. Those enemies get stunned for two turns and he still has the wild battling on defense team part of his rush. But this time he gains 75% bonus HP. Obviously on a defense team as an S class, much more viable. So the potential of that being an issue is going to be much higher. Now we go across the active skill and this is where this active skill goes from just being like okay to actually being like kind of meta defining at the moment especially in certain areas of the game elusive and recover still but now it's got an initial cooldown of one then a cooldown of three number of uses remains at five as well this character gets elusive for two turns all teammates recover from bleed burn and maim so the actual core component of this active skill remains exactly the same but the initial cooldown goes from two to one and where this makes a massive difference is it's going to directly counter Rowley on attack and defense like Raulito's lead skill is a bleed and it's 600 to everybody for three turns everybody's taking a lot of damage and this is going to nullify that instantly click of your fingers it's done and he will do that if people are bleeding burning or have maim and basically that means on a defense team it will happen before it ticks 
for the entire defense team because you have your turn first then the bleed happens and he will just cleanse all the bleed and the bleed will not happen at all however looking at the leader skill we know it does get buffed up all tough and strong teammates get a huge bonus to ap when taking damage now rather than very large and now it's at the beginning of each wave up to five enemies get stunned for one turn that's a full team one turn stun and it's basically going to make it so that a defense team goes first if the entire attack team gets stunned which potentially could happen because i know a lot of people use taunt resist on their attack teams you generally can only use one resist on attack you generally use two resists on defense just because you don't know what you, you know you're going to come up against and i've seen a lot of people go away from stun resist to taunt resist to confuse resist to, to stop these random effects happening on rushes and trying to nullify stun on defense with their disarms this is going to make a massive difference to the sort of resist that people are going to start using on their attack teams. It's, while you would think that stun would become a bigger issue because of this, it actually become probably less of an issue except for this leader skill because if everyone's using stun resist, they're less likely to be stunned, but that means they're more likely to be taunted. They're more likely to be confused. So that's going to have an increase in those sort of areas. Now, like I said before, I don't think this goes down a good road. I do not like this at all. It means you have to also survive one less turn on a defense team than you did before because because if everyone gets stunned you're going to gain your ap that turn they're going to get one less turn before they can rush you know you're going to have to have a lot of ap increases on the attack team you're going to have to have command it's sort of like enforcing that and like i said i don't think this goes down the right, uh, right path i do not think the leader skill is that great other than the stun the huge ap on it on defense is not great it would have been worse if it was an actual pure stat if it was like 30 percent stat because Obviously, that huge bonus to AP when taking damage is not even going to work first turn if everyone gets stunned. It's just useless. You could potentially get first turn command rushes with Mercer as your defense leader. When all of your team is stunned, if you have someone who's a fast character, you know, not getting the leader bonus, but you don't need the leader bonus, realistically, you don't need it. With 8% weapons and someone's got a 20% weapon in their hand. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. Like, if it's not obvious enough, I'm not a big fan of this. Just because, like like I said, the path this can go down, it's kind of dark. Let's be honest, it's kind of dark. Now we go across to the weapon again, and it has no change. It's exactly the same as the six-star version. But this also makes him very good on a defense team instantly. He doesn't need too much increase. You know, you're not going to have to wait for that special upgrade. So you're going to be able to get his weapon to five-star quite quickly. And tough characters also have the bonus in the four slot where they can have it if they get crit hit against them they can do days so there is a little bit extra control for tough characters on defense teams that i can see coming along so overall i think merce is pretty good i don't think his kit really works with each other it's just he's got three separate parts of his kit but they do work within you know how the game works you know the rush is going to work in general the leader skill is just going to be frustrating and the active skill is just to counter these lacerator bleed teams that are going around at the moment and i can see that leader skill just being annoying coming up against that on defense teams and you may have to if he becomes you know very widespread have to have a heavy stun resist attack team and we might see some turn one cleanses coming in to try and counter this Hopefully this isn't you know, a sign of things that come with the leader skills. We'll have to wait and see. But do tell me what you think about Mercer as an S-Class character. What do you think of his visual design? Do, someone do tell me what it means when it says the rotten core. But that is the end of my video. Thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.